Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Panky. For those of you guys that are new, welcome, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can notified or get notified of the most recent videos going up. For those of you guys returning, my lovelies, welcome back. As you guys know, I get very, very productive around this time. It is the busiest season for us. So if you guys are interested in getting personal readings, spell work, cleansings, now is the time to do so so that you can kick off the new year feeling fresh and renewed. So you can find all of that on the description uh, link below on our online store. Now, I was actually doing a reading for a client um, a little bit earlier today and gave me this pull, this, this, you know, maybe this is something that I should do for you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to look into all the zodiac signs and we're going to see what are the major events that are going to be unfolding for you guys for the next coming two to three months. So from now all the way to New Year's. So like I said, welcome. <laughs> Take uh, your coffee or whatever, your tea, whatever it is that you're drinking, sit with me and let's see exactly what's unfolding for each one of the signs. So we're going to start off backwards this time. We're going to start off with Pisces all the way to Aries. So like I said, get your tea, get your coffee. We're going to see exactly what is unfolding for everyone. I want to wish you guys happy Hallows Eve as we're quickly approaching. We are very excited on this side. I hope you guys are too. Anyways, let's get into it. Que se sea en el recinto, en el recinto y en las cartas que los seres de luz que trabajan aquí hablen en luz y en verdad. En luz y en verdad quiero saber y quiero entender. I call upon all my wise and loving spirit guides, spirits of light and love, my ancestors and archangels, spirits of divination. I invoke thee. Allow me to open up as a vessel. Let it be you who speaks through me. Allow me to see, hear, sense, feel, and receive the messages for each one of the signs. What is the major life changes that are going to be unfolding? We're going to begin here with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What are the major life changes that are going to be unfolding for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? All right, here we go. We're starting off here with the Two of Cups. So what they're showing me here, Pisces, is there's going to be uh, major transitions and changes in regards to love and romance or partnerships, not necessarily just romance. This could be business. If you are running a business or have a partner or have been thinking of running a business with a partnership, um, quickly that's going to be unfolding for you guys. However, if it is relationships, for some of you guys, it could be taking it to the very next level. For others of you, higher level of commitment. And twos are always about uh, choices as well. So for some of you guys making a very difficult choice in regards to a love matter, that's what's going to be unfolding, like I said, in the next coming two to three months. Now, the next card here is the world. So major events here happening, like I said. For some of you guys, I do see marriage. And these are... Um, this is a relationship that is genuine and authentic. So what do I mean by that? If you've been dealing with a relationship that is toxic or more of a karmic type of connection, this could be the difficult choice that needs to be made um, so that you don't continuously keep reoccurring this cycle. Now, if you are in a healthy, loving relationship and every relationship has struggles and difficulties, that's a fact. Um but it's not toxic, it's not chaotic, it is harmonious. Um, there is a higher elevation, a higher commitment that is going to be unfolding from now to January. So for some of you guys, this could be making it official. For others of you, this could be committing. This could, mar Marriage could be one of the things that is very uh, prominent for you guys for the beginning of 2023. Um, finally, I'm going to pull one more card. Here we go. And we have the four of cups. So yeah, like I said, I feel like for some of you guys, this is partnerships is going to be very important from now to January. This is figuring out if you're happy, if you are um, fully committed to a relationship. And it is, like I said, um, we're not talking about the shadow side. We're not talking about a relationship that is very superficial we're talking about genuine deep soul type of connections if you have been like i said um not necessarily very stable however it is a healthy relationship there is a higher elevation there is commitment 
there is marriage that is going to be unfolding for others of you. Um, like I said, it could be business propositions or partnering up with someone uh, from now all the way to January that is really going to take it to the next level, take your business to the next level. This could be collaborations as well. But what I am seeing here is also having the necessity and the need at this point in time to make decisions that may be very difficult, that may be very hard for you, uh, but they are necessary in order so you don't keep experiencing or repeating the same cycle, a cycle where uh, often you're being left feeling empty or left feeling uh, like people don't appreciate or they're taking you for granted. When do you get to the point of saying enough is enough basically is what they're saying here. Major transitions, like I said, and because the world card is here, whether you're ready to let go or not, the universe will put you in positions or situations that are going to push you to make that decision. So be ready for that, Pisces, okay? All right, now we're going to go with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Major life changes that are unfolding for them. What can they expect in the next coming three months? Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. <clears throat> major life changes aquarius sun moon rising and venus okay here we go all right aquarius we're starting off here with the two of pentacles decisions to be made decisions that are not necessarily um something that you may feel like it's necessity uh to make decisions at this point in time so as an example if you've been dealing with a situation that's been reoccurring um but at this point, you're kind of used to dealing with it. You may feel like you don't necessarily have to make major changes because it's been happening for a while. You've been dealing with this. What Spirit is telling you is whether you're ready or not, you will be put in a position that needs to. Be, you need to make a decision. This could be career. This could be finances. This could be relationships, partnerships in every single aspect of your life, whatever, whatever area. Uh, has been very in balance will be coming to the forefront for you to make decisions that need to be made in order to bring more harmonious type of energy to your life and to your peace of mind now the next card that we have here is the two of cups so perhaps for some of you guys a decision to be made in regards to love maybe you're dealing with multiple people for others of you it could be that you are trying to or have been trying to cement a committed relationship and it's brought you very much imbalanced um for some of you guys what i'm hearing is almost like being hopeful uh putting effort energy behind a relationship that perhaps leaves you empty-handed or leaves you feeling like what you do is not enough at this point in time what they're telling you it's time to take your energy back it's time to take your power back aquarius if it's not working out don't try to force it um, by forcing it, you're only losing yourself in this connection or in this relationship, and it's bringing you very much unbalanced. Now, the next card here is the judgments so of the decision to be made will be made sometime from now, like I said, all the way to January. For some of you guys, it's choosing to free yourself from a situation that has been very burdensome, uh, very difficult to overcome. Uh, for some of you guys, it could be that you are holding on because of loyalty or because of responsibility. However, like I said, from now to January, you will be uh, put in a situation that the decision needs to be made and you will be making the decision and that decision will correlate into freeing you or releasing yourself from some type of responsibility. This could be uh, working out a family dynamic where you feel like they've strained you, where you feel like you're not at peace. Uh, you're constantly having to deal with drama um, and you've been sticking around or dealing with that because you feel some type of self-responsibility. But it's the realization with the Two of Cups, remember duality. It's also understanding that what we give out, we have to be able to receive. And reciprocation is very important. And if they are uh, in essence, taking advantage of your kind heart or taking advantage of your hard work or the dealing with it and they're just not putting effort, it's time to free yourself from that mental slavery is what I'm hearing. So again, sometimes, unfortunately, humans have this tendency of uh, putting loyalty above everything, 
even their sanity or their peace of mind. And that's not very constructive. Why? Because if you are loyal to someone to the point where it, you know, messes with your peace of mind or it, um, in essence, you know, affects you in every other aspect, you're kind of losing yourself in this connection or in this relationship or in this uh, dynamic uh, because you're trying the best or your hardest to work through something that they're not willing to work through. Um, so again, twos are always, you know, like I said, partnerships, it's always uh, multiple people in the situation. So it takes two people to make it work. And this is not just relationships, like I said, this could be with work. This could be with um, family, you know, uh, sacrificing and, you know, saying I can't walk away or I can't stop helping my mom or I can't stop helping my dad because I love them because, you know, this because of that. Um, yeah, but is it affecting you to the point where you're literally sacrificing a lot of yourself? Uh, then that's not healthy. That's codependency. So I hope that gives you guys some insight. Now let's go to, let's go to Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the major life changes that are going to be changing or unfolding for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising? Oh, Seven of Cups came out, Capricorn. <laughs> All right, let's see. What are the major life changes that are going to be unfolding for you? So with the Seven of Cups, what I'm sensing is a lot of you Capricorns are going to be experiencing a lot of momentum. Now, keep in mind, Saturn had been retrograde. Mercury has been in retrograde. There's a lot of planets that are going to start to go direct. And with the Seven of Cups, whatever you felt that there was blockages or things were slowing down or not moving as quickly as you would want, that's quickly going to be changing sometime around October the 23rd. Um, in that momentum, there's a lot of options that are going to start to come out for you, Capricorn. It's going to be very important, very important for you guys to make decisions um, with things that really correlate with your soul's purpose. So what I mean by that is anything that gets you excited or that you're very passionate about, you really want to take advantage of that, of those opportunities. Um, don't try to entertain opportunities that are very, um, very not in, not in connection with what you're wanting to do or what you're trying to manifest in your life, only because you want to take full advantage of it. You don't want to hoarder those opportunities because then you're going to be, off balance you're not going to really learn how to or be able to prioritize and you may lose out on good opportunities that are going to be very beneficial for you this could be in love this could be finances this could be career so again out of all the decisions or all the opportunities that come your way make sure to pick and choose the ones that you're really passionate about that you're really uh, excited about because that's connecting to your source that's connecting to your purpose and that's what's going to build or help you build what's standing out for me is right here sorry right here the ladder so it's like you want to choose you want to be able to choose the opportunities that are going to help you grow that are going to help you elevate this could be elevate your status this could be elevate uh in the court literal corporate uh ladder this is opportunities that are really going to uh, impact you, not only for the next coming three months, but probably all through 2023. So be mindful of that, Capricorn. The next card we have here is the judgment, decisions to be made, decisions, decisions. <laughs> like I said, uh, following what you're really passionate about and what you really want to make happen is definitely uh, what you want to do, what you want to embrace. You don't want to entertain, like I said, because I'm seeing you guys taking as much opportunities as possible. So Capricorn, right? <laughs> but in that, you may lose control. You may lose time um, uh, or just get distracted with too much that's going on that you kind of drop the ball on certain things that were really important. So again, Five of Swords here is indicating to me you don't want to make decisions that ultimately may be very enticing in the moment, 
um, because again, if it's because, oh, I want to take it full advantage of it and by taking too many opportunities or entertaining too many people or entertaining um, uh, possibilities for work and finances, you may drop the ball on those that are were really going to affect or transform your life and you may end up feeling like you were duped, like you uh, chose wrong or you dropped the ball and you're kicking yourself in the butt. So you don't want to do that, Capricorn. Crucial, crucial for the next coming months. Take advantage of the opportunities that are coming your way. However, don't entertain or don't try to take up too much. You don't want to only choose what you're passionate about is what they're saying. Now, this could be love. This could be romance. This could be partnerships. This could be career wise. This could be finances, whatever it is. Make sure that you're choosing uh, quality over quantity Capricorn. All right. All right. Now let's go to Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What life changes are unfolding for them? Major life changes for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the next coming three months. Sagittarius, Sagis. All right, here we go. Sagittarius. Okay, we have the Five of Wands, competition. Competition definitely unfolding there. I see a lot of you guys really... I want to say getting a lot of attention. Yep, Seven of Cups here. Uh, getting a lot of attention. Um, this could be romance, relationships, partnerships. Is going to be something that is going to be very major for you guys in the next coming months. And the Five of Wands is people literally fighting to try to get your attention or people that are really trying to put themselves out there. It's almost like what I'm hearing is a loud voice. Um, like trying to overpower the rest of the voices that I'm hearing, uh, almost as a way to try to get my attention. So that's what I'm sensing. What they're telling me here is don't go for what's loud and obnoxious Sagittarius. You want to pick what brings peace to you. Um, you guys have a tendency, not all of you, but the majority of you guys have a tendency of really liking what's exciting. Um, because that's what keeps your focus, right? The moment it becomes a bit routine, you kind of start to look around or start to question a lot of things. But one thing Sagittarians do have is when you guys are emotionally invested, you guys are extremely loyal, even to your detriment. So what they're saying here is try the best you can when it comes to love and romance um, to not necessarily go for the fiery or not necessarily go for the exciting um, because that is a habit, a trait, or a cycle that you've done in the past. It's time to seek something that brings peace, something that brings emotional stability to you. And the reason I say that is because what's standing out to me very much is the ocean and the fact that it's not bumpy, it's not, it's extremely still, which indicates to me emotional stability um, and being distracted by choices. So again, be very mindful of that. Now, the next card here is the Nine of Pentacles. So yeah, I feel like for a lot of you guys, love and romance is definitely something that is going to be kicking up a bit for you guys. Uh, this is having multiple opportunities, multiple choices. Choose, always choose um, from now all the way to January, Sagittarius. Always choose yourself. If you don't find someone that is, like I said, bringing some type of mental peace to you or that is bringing some type of making you feel um, secure. And if they're not, instead of going for the loud, the obnoxious, or even entertaining just because you don't want to be alone, choose yourself until the right one comes along, Sagittarius. Nine of Pentacles is learning to be on your own. It is about loving and experimenting and embracing singlehood. Um, for some of you guys could be, you know, healing. Could be that you're coming out of something that was very difficult to overcome. And, you know, maybe you have those moments of feeling lonely and you want someone to share life with. But what Spirit is telling you is if it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't bring some type of stability and I feel it more on an emotional level like 
more at peace, more calm, um, choose yourself. Choose to be alone for a bit. Choose to get to know yourself all over again. Choose to do what you love to do and nurture yourself and take care of yourself and heal above all. Okay? All right. Because I see you guys having a lot of options. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Sometimes having a lot of options, if it doesn't, like you don't connect with someone on a deep level, it, it, it becomes noise. You know what I mean? It's kind of like when you are in a room full of people and you casually know them, but it, it almost feels like even being surrounded by so many people, you still feel alone. You still feel unseen. You still feel just like it doesn't make sense. It, it Everything just seems like noise. And the reason for that is because your soul, you know, your spirit is craving something deeper, something of substance, something that you know, feeds your purpose, that feeds your soul. So that's the energy that I'm sensing for you guys. All right, now let's go to Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What are the major life changes that are unfolding from now to three months for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go, Scorpio. All right, we have... Seven of Pentacles. Okay. So you guys are going to or going through this cycle of being able to see all the fruits of your hard labor. This could be relationships, uh, relationships, you know, being able to take it to the next level, uh, to solidify some type of connection, some type of relation relationship, the deepening of it. For others of you, it is finally being able to feel seen, feel heard at your job, at your work, your business. Um, people really respecting and hearing you out, wanting to know exactly how you feel or what you think about a situation. It's like they're really respecting um, your view on certain things. Uh, for others of you, it's going up the going up the ladder, really being able to see on a grander scale of things, uh, the fruits of your very hard labor, Scorpio. All right, next card here is Eight of Wands. Very quick movement, momentum, growth, advancement, um, judgment. I've had judgment for three, three ratings already. All right, so what they're showing me here is, again, like I said, seeing the fruits of your labor. I feel like in the next coming months, you guys are going to feel like when it comes to your career, when it comes to your finances, you feel like things are really kicking it up a notch. It's like I see you guys quickly progressing or quickly growing. Um, this could be you like every, as an example, if you've been working at a company for five years and just the past two years uh, you've been going up the ladder or you've been getting higher positions, it's going to feel like for the next coming months growth is something that is like quickly happening for you in a very short time in comparison to the five years you've been there so it's almost like there literally nothing could stop you right now scorpio <clears throat> when it comes to the elevation and the growth the making of things happen uh this is having enough money to uh want to travel this is uh having enough money or time uh, to really sit back and see how far you've came. This is all about uh, progressing and moving forward with major momentum. Now, for others of you, I do see the past returning or you guys having to deal with something from the past. This could be a next partner, next lover. This could be if there's children involved. This could be dealing with the father or the mom of the child. Um, and I feel that it's almost like them trying to release some type of responsibility for some of you guys. Um, so what I mean by that, as, as an example, if you've been fighting for child support for a while and it just hasn't gone through, that's definitely going to be uh, moving forward in a very positive outcome for you, Scorpio. Uh, for others of you, like I said, a past lover, someone from the past returning, um, 
it could be through communication through it could be a random text or something like that now the judgment card does indicate to me uh understanding or knowing that it's time uh as an example if there's been a separation or a breakup the past i don't know eight months or something like that uh or seven months for some of you guys and you've been hopeful and wanting to reconnect or or wanting to see if there's reconciliation there i do see it happening however with the judgment card i feel like what spirit is telling you guys is it's time for you to free yourself from that connection so that you can be able to go to the next chapter in your life and fully embrace any new beginning um sometimes things are better left undone sometimes because the past comes back around knocking doesn't necessarily mean that the right thing to do is to entertain or to even open the doors up you know all right now let's go to Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's see what is unfolding for Libra. What major life changes for Libra are happening from now to three months from now? Spirits, Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Let's see what's going on with Libra. All right, we have the Nine of Swords. Uh, feeling stuck, feeling burdened. A bit of anxiety, stress about a relationship or someone from your past. The sun card does indicate to me a uh, relationship or partnership and the page of swords. Okay, so I feel like for some of you guys or at least the collective of Libra, you guys are going to be dealing with the refusal of wanting to let go or wanting to move on to the next cycle in your life because there were certain things that were left undone or pending. Now, if there is regret here on your part, Libra, as an example, you were in a relationship, you jeopardized it, or it came to an end because either you decided or because you didn't fight for it, I feel like there is a cycle where uh, you're going to be experiencing in the next coming months a bit of regret, a bit of wanting to revisit that situation. I see you guys really like, I don't want to necessarily say obsessing. But it's almost like wanting to find out what's going on with that person. What What is it? Like, have they moved on? Are they in a relationship? Are they in a committed relationship? That type of scenario. Now, the message here is in the next coming months, what I do see happening is I do see communication. I do see you either reaching out to them or them reaching out to you. Um, and having to take self-responsibility. So what I mean by that is I feel like it's a healing it's a healing lesson that you're going through whereas I feel like the person that you're dealing with or will be dealing with went through it themselves. So it's almost like they they're coming out of a healing. I feel like you're just beginning your healing. So I feel like even if the reconnection happens, there is still you guys are still not going to be on the same plane. You're not going to be on the same vibration because I feel like they've either done their job, they've worked on themselves and they came out of the other side and you're still going through it. So not sure if that makes sense, but what they're telling me here is there is regret on your part and there is a revisiting of a relationship or a partnership from the past um, where you're wanting to either reconcile or say your peace, basically. Um, but I feel like when it comes to like wanting to fight for the relationship or the connection, like you guys are still, it, it wouldn't work out is what I'm hearing. It's not going to work out because you guys are in two separate, um, two very separate vibrations. So this is almost like timelines, um, just as in, it wouldn't work out for you guys. Sorry to say that. Sometimes that happens, you guys, you know. Uh, sometimes, I don't know if it's ever happened to you guys where you're dating someone and it just doesn't work out, but you felt the connection was really deep and then you move on or the person that you're dating moves on quicker than you or you move on quicker than them. It doesn't necessarily mean that they healed or that they moved on from that. It just means that sometimes... They have so much like baggage from previous relationships that they don't know how to be by themselves. So they jump from one relationship to another. 
And even though you feel like you didn't move on as quickly as they did, in essence, you were coming from a more wiser energy because you're working on yourself, you're healing, you are finding out what it is that you want in relationships, what it is that you don't, you're healing the hurt and the pain that was left. So sometimes even though it may feel like the person moved on, the person that moves on quicker basically is the person that ultimately ends up with regret or pain because once that other person has healed, that then they realize what they did and remorse or regret is what's left and they have to go through the healing even though you've gone through it already because you didn't move on as quickly or vice versa. So I see them barely going through that healing energy. All right, now let's move on to Virgo. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is the major life changes? What is unfolding for them? What major changes are unfolding in the next coming three months? For Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Virgo. Let's see what is unfolding for you. All right, so we have justice, okay? Balance, decisions. Decisions that have to be made, uh, very methodical, non-emotional. Don't listen to your emotions when making decisions. It is important to stay with a cool head or a cool mind, okay? And we have death card, major transitions, major life changes that are happening for you, Virgos. Okay, so if you felt like you were dealing with a situation where you were treated unfairly or unjustly in regards to a relationship, a partnership, um, you were hoping or wanting it to be commitment, to go that extra mile, to go uh, the end all be all. Um, and for some reason, you felt like you were duped or like you were taken along a ride, right? Like they strung you along. Uh, there is going to be a revisiting of the situation because I see them coming back around. But the reason why they're coming back around is because this connection may actually have the possibility of a rebirth. So sometimes relationships don't work out and it doesn't necessarily mean that the love is not there or it doesn't mean that uh, both partners don't love each other or don't care for each other. Sometimes it just means that we have to go our own separate ways because there's certain lessons that still need to be learned before we're able to come back together and come back stronger. So that's what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing things were imbalanced, not balanced at all. You both kind of started losing yourselves in the relationship or giving too much or sacrificing too much of yourself. And somehow there could have been a separation, a break of some type of ending. Um, but what's really standing out to me with the death card here is the star that's right at the center. So that's indicating to me, yes, it came to an end, but there's also a rebirth that's going to be happening. A, let's say, revisitation of the situation or relationship in order to finally be aligned with the same vibration, the same desires, the same wants. Um, so it's basically separating you guys, pulling you guys towards separate ways so you guys can learn your lessons, become more mature, understand and know what it is that you want, have a clear understanding of that, then come back together to be in a healthy, loving relationship. So that's what I see for a lot of you guys. A lot of transitions that are uh, in regards to relationships or even in general for some of you guys that are single, uh, Virgos, uh, it could be that, you know, at some point when you've dated people, you have a tendency of self-sacrificing yourself too much uh, to the point where it becomes very un unbalanced. And ultimately what's happening here is the understanding, the learning that I'm not going to deal through or go through this pain no more. I have to be more balanced. I have to not give 100% all the time if they're not reciprocating. And then the rebirth happens, which is, starting a new cycle where you're transformed because you are the higher version of yourself. The understanding that 
yes, it's good to give, but not give 100%. You have to give in order to receive that type of energy for you guys. So there's major transitions in regards to your love life, Virgo. All right, now let's go to Leo. What changes, what life changes are unfolding for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? If you guys enjoy these videos, definitely comment below. Let me know so I can keep on coming for you guys. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What major life changes are unfolding for Leos? Here we go. Major life changes for Leos. We have the Two of Pentacles, the Moon, and the Four of Swords. Mm. Very interesting. I see you guys a bit off. And for some of you guys, it could be because you're very much in your feelings. You're very much emotional right now, Leo. Um, so what they're showing me here is the major transitions that are going to be unfolding for you guys is not only the healing, not only the releasing, but I see you guys letting go completely of a cycle from your past. So this is a cycle that has a lot to do with self-awareness, with your power, with what you're capable of making happen and what you bring to the table. This is you understanding what you bring to the table. I'm not just talking about relationships. I'm talking about career, right? The realizing what you're capable of doing, your work ethic. Um, are they paying you enough? Are they appreciating what you do? Are you the leader? Or have you been following and you've been put on a role of a follower and you've had enough because you've shown that you're capable of leading? So there is a major transition here that's happening for you guys where there is a need for some type of some type of temporary seclusion of bringing balance to your life. So for some of you guys, this is you guys taking some time off. This could be going on vac vacation. This could be taking some sick days, um, not because you're sick, but more because you're wanting to take inventory of exactly where you're at at this point in your life. The moon here has two wolves, right? The black and the white wolf. What that's indicating to me is the realization of your light and your shadow side. The understanding of emotions and feelings. What is it that you've been suppressing for a very long time, Leo? Have you said that you moved on because you've been broken up for like five years? Are you really moved on? Have you really moved on, I should say? Or are there still some feelings that are deep in the depths of you that are coming to surface and you don't know why this is happening? You feel imbalanced. Something that you're hearing or something that you're finding out about a person that perhaps you thought you didn't have any more feelings for or you thought like you had moved on is basically rattling you and you are trying to understand what this all means. And what it means is basically that you're going through a cycle <clears throat> or you have gone through a cycle of purging, um, but you're now realizing the unhealed part of yourself. For some of you guys, it could be that you have multiple choices to, to have or to make when it comes to love and romance. And you don't understand because you feel like you're judging yourself too harshly. You feel like, you know, I'm very picky, but yet I still keep picking the wrong ones. Um, and you're doubting your intuition. You're doubting your GPS, which is your intuition. You are doubting can I make the right choice? What they're telling you is what you need to do is disconnect from the world or disconnect from the idea that you have of love or what you've experienced in the past when it comes to love and romance and really see things in a material sense. Are they putting the effort? Have they been chasing you for a while? And the, you, the more you push, the more they come towards you. I mean, that is a person that cares, right? Because they're putting the effort, they're putting the energy. Now, if you have someone that is much more suited for you or you feel like you're much more attracted to them, but you're kind of ignoring certain red flags because, you know, you feel them more, 
are you being delusional? Are you not being real? Or are you choosing to be delusional and pretend like you're not seeing those red flags? Because you feel like they're more physically appealing to you than the other choice. And if you're doubting, like I said, there is a need for you to disconnect. There is a need for you to ground. There is a need for you to nurture your spiritual side. This is not just in love. This is not just in romance. This could be at work. This could be, it's almost an overwhelming feeling that I'm sensing like you're judging yourself too harshly where it's come to the point where you doubt if you're even capable of making the right decisions. What spirit is telling you is when you get to that point, it just means that you're extremely overwhelmed, that you need to ground yourself, that you need to connect with your spiritual side. Meditation would be highly encouraged here. Because if you don't for the next coming months, you're going to be feeling like you're just cruising by these months, right? Without really wanting to make decisions. And as you all know, when we don't or we don't have the capability or the courage to make decisions, you're allowing other people to make decisions for you. I hope that makes sense. And it seemed like all over the place. But what they're telling you here is feed your spiritual side, Leo. All right, now let's look at cancer. What are the next major life changes for cancers? Cancer, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Oh, I dropped some cards. Give me one second, you guys. Okay, here we go. Okay, Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the major life changes that are unfolding for Cancers in the next coming three months? Cancer. We have Temperance. Six of Pentacles. And two of cups. Okay. So choosing or having the need to choose to heal yourself, cancer. Uh, heal yourself from the need to overcompensate when it comes to love and romance. Uh, there is going to be lessons that are going to be teaching you for the next coming months. Where if you give too much, people will continue to take and take from you. Uh, to the point of almost because what I'm hearing is almost like, how could I be so stupid? How could I be so blind? Um, so they may push your boundaries. They may push your limits. The people that you're dealing with when it comes to love and romance uh, may be needing from you. Uh, it could be overly emotional, could be finances, asking for help, some type of assistance. You do it out of the kindness of your heart and then they keep taking advantage of that. What they're teaching you here for the next coming months is to learn to be able to, you know, to be able to discern um, people that really need your help and people that are just taking advantage of your kind heart. So temperance is an indication of having the need to balance something that is affecting your life. When we're talking about love and romance, six of pentacles, it's giving and taking um, someone in this connection or in this relationship has a tendency of overgiving or overtaking. What I'm sensing is, again, there are certain things about you, Cancer, that you need to work through in order to be able to see or feel whole, uh, like you don't have to be or you don't have to maintain or carry this, you know, portrayal of yourself like you're perfect and you're healed um, because there are certain insecurities about yourself that you try to overcompensate. So it's almost giving me the vibe like, for example, um, you know, if a person or the partner that you're dealing with um, may bring up the conversation, and this could be a person that's new, may bring up the, the conversation about, you know, finances or that they're struggling. Um and because you want them to think that you have your life together, you may be struggling as well. But you may make a comment like, you know, 
that you're doing pretty good, you're giving off this vibe like, oh, you know, cancer is doing really good. So that means that maybe if, you know, maybe if I mention that, you know, I'm struggling or I don't have for gas or, or something that that you would not mind. And they put you in this predicament where I feel like you're embarrassed to say no. And and you say yes. And they keep doing it. And you just fall into this pattern of like being so scared to say no because you feel like you will be rejected. Um, it doesn't have to play out that way, but that's what I'm sensing. And what they're saying here is you need to learn to balance. You need to learn to give as much as you take or to take as much as you give. If you're not allowing your partners or the people that you're seeing or that you're dating, if you're not allowing them to step up to be the man or the woman that they need to be, you know, grown as adults, uh, to figure their life out, you're always going to be looked at like the mommy or daddy type. And though you may feel like that's okay because there's unhealed parts of you where you feel like you want to nurture, you want to take care of them, you want to do for them, it puts you in a predicament of feeling like it's not an equal exchange at some point. And with the two of cups, balance is very important. Temperance is all about balance. It's all about not overdoing because then it becomes an issue. So I feel like the theme for you guys is going to be where in your life are you doing too much for people? Where in your life are you not being reciprocated? Are they continuously relying on you to the point where it leaves you empty handed, where you literally feel like you have to take the shirt off your back to give it to someone? And that's fine to do. It just shows the type of heart that you have. But if you find yourself doing that multiple times, then there's a problem because you're going to be fucking cold, cancer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So what they're telling you is there's a need for balance. Whether you see that or not, you will be tested these coming months in that aspect where you're going to feel like, think of it this way. If you're put in a position where you feel like you want to say no, but you're scared to say no, that's when you know that you need to put your foot down and say no. Because if you don't, it's a cycle that's going to keep repeating until you get it, until you learn to stand up for yourself, Cancer. All right, now let's go to... Gemini. Let's see what is unfolding for Gemini. What can Gemini expect? What major life changes or lessons are unfolding for Geminis from now to three months from now? What major life changes are unfolding for Gemini? Okay, I feel it weak, so I'm going to put it back in here. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What major life changes for Geminis? in the next coming three months. All right, let's see, Gemini. Like I said, if you guys enjoy these readings, definitely comment below, let me know. We have the King of Cups so that I can keep bringing them to you guys. King of Cups, Nine of Swords, and the Judgment. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is for some of you Geminis, I feel like the major life lessons, I should say, <laughs> major changes that are unfolding for you is healing. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you've gone through life um, almost on survival mode. And when we talk about survival mode, it's almost like you've had to fight for everything you have, everything you've accomplished. Um like you've had to fight, you've had to earn that. And it's put you in a position where you perhaps felt like, even when it comes to partnerships or relationships, it's almost like you give so much of yourself, you sacrifice certain aspects of you, maybe even try to change certain aspects of you to accommodate the partner or person that you're dealing with or that you're partnered with. And it's left you feeling empty. It's left you feeling tired, exhausted. Um, and there is this transition where you're going into 
vibrating more from your heart chakra. So I feel like for a lot of you guys, there is healing trauma from past relationships, but also from childhood. Um, getting to the point of feeling like enough is enough. So for some of you guys, there is self-actualization that's happening here. So what do I mean by that? <clears throat> if you have a tendency, as an example, in relationships, you have a tendency of going for a specific type. They drop the ball, and in the next coming months, you will not automatically protect yourself and, you know, raise your walls up and do what you usually do. What I see you doing is really internalizing what is it that went wrong in this relationship or why did I sacrifice so much of myself? Like you're literally trying to get to the root cause of what happened. Um, why did you allow certain things to slide? And in that, it's very difficult, yes. And it is basically accepting I've changed my person or I've changed my habits or I've changed who I am at some point because the last time I opened up or the last time I gave my heart or the last time I fell in love, they hurt me and they hurt me really bad. But at this point, you're realizing, but I also have lost myself or changed who I am because of this person. I'm no longer doing that. So I see you freeing yourself. It's like you guys are releasing yourselves from either a relationship, someone you were holding on to very closely, even if you guys are not together. It's like you just didn't seem to be able to move on. You're making the decision to move on and to heal from that. And you're releasing yourself from the stress and worry. Now, for others of you, you could be still dealing with this person. And what they're saying here is, and it doesn't have to be partnerships. This could be relationships in every aspect. This could be your friends. This could be your colleagues. This could be family. It's like, I have to protect my peace and my sanity. You know, for some of you guys, I'm building a family. And my family, the toxic ones, are affecting it to the point where I feel stuck. I feel like I have to sacrifice certain aspects of myself to be with the person I love, but also to accommodate my family or my friends. So there is this rationalizing, but also understanding that just because family is family doesn't mean you have to deal with their disrespect. Or, yes, I love the person that I'm with, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to allow them to run my life just because they don't like my family members. Do you see what I'm saying? There, There's something that's happening here in your mind, Gemini, where you're realizing who's putting effort and who's not. And you're not hesitating to cut them the fuck out of your life at this point. It's like, I'm choosing my peace of mind. I'm choosing who I am or who I was. And maybe I changed because of this person. I'm going back to who I really am. And I'm letting go of the old version of me or the tainted version of myself. And I'm moving forward. Like you're taking your power back is what I'm seeing here, Gemini. Powerful, powerful reading here for you guys. <clears throat> All right, now let's go to Taurus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. All right, what changes, what major life changes are happening for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the next coming three months? Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Taurus. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Let's see what's unfolding for Taurus. I pulled two cards, so I'm going to stay with them. Queen of Wands and the Chariot. Okay. So you guys are chasing your aspirations. You're listening to your intuition. You're following what's exciting or what's exciting you. For some of you guys, I do see you guys uh, making a major purchase. For some of you guys, this is purchasing a new home, a new car. Uh, for others of you, this could be uh, making a, I wouldn't necessarily say a risky investment. It has more to do with maybe like uh, an expensive investment. So again, for some of you guys, it's deciding I've been working hard enough. I've been putting a lot of work effort. I see you guys purchasing a new car, um, a new vehicle. 
Uh, for others of you, it could be just making the decision, I've been busting my ass and I deserve to go on vacation. And you are actually not just talking about it, you're actually doing it. With the temperance card here, I feel like it's very ne it's very necessary for you guys um, because you need to bring balance to your life. It's not just about work. It's not just the everyday grind. Um, there is a need to disconnect. There is a need for self-care and self-love. So that's what you guys can expect in the next coming months. You're going to feel a bit restless. You're going to feel like I have to get away. I have to do something where I'm able to completely disconnect and bring some type of Zen or some type of, um, some type of peace. I feel for a lot of you guys, this is uh, self care and uh, self love that is going to be really affecting you guys in the next coming months. Um, almost like making it a complete ritual where you're taking care of your peace of mind, where you're uh, maybe even up for new things. I see you guys being a little bit more spontaneous, getting out of that routine. Uh, like I said, taking a short trip for some of you guys, for others of you guys going on vacation, for others of you guys uh, making the very quick decision of purchasing a car. Um, it's almost like the wanting to validate yourself or the hard work and determination you've put into life, which I am all for, Taurus, let me tell you. A lot of the times we get so wrapped up in the everyday grind that we completely forget to live life, right? And that's what I see you guys. I see you guys really searching or really putting effort towards your self-care. Uh, King of Cups does indicate to me, again, finding that peace, that harmony, um, maintaining that emotional stability within yourself. So I see you guys getting out of your comfort zone i see for some of you guys like i said travel is definitely very present here and um just doing what makes you feel more comfortable what makes you feel more happy it's almost like a recharge of your soul uh because i do see you guys rather a little bit more spontaneous than usual and like i said an unexpected uh trip or some type of vacation is definitely highlighted here for you guys it's exciting you thanks for taurus I am so jealous in the positive way. I wish I can think of vacation. <laughs> All right, now let's go to finally Aries, Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, what major life changes are unfolding for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Major life changes are unfolding for them. Okay, here we go. All right, Aries, let's see what's going on with Aries. We have the Seven of Cups. Judgment. I keep pulling this Judgment card for so many cards. I think it's the Planet Alignments for sure. And the Nine of Swords. Okay, so I see you guys really... I'm not going to lie. I feel like some of you guys recently could have made a decision. This could be regarding work. This could be regarding your finances. Or this could be regarding a relationship. I feel like you guys could have recently made a choice in regards to that. Um, perhaps wasn't the best decision to be made. I feel like for some of you guys, you rushed into making a decision. And now you're dealing with a bit of regret. So if you, as an example, were dealing with multiple people... Um, and we're unsure, uncertain who you really wanted to put effort towards. You could have chosen the wrong person. And I don't blame you, Aries, because I see this person as like they portrayed themselves to be a certain way and they were completely the opposite of that. For others of you, this could indicate just um, not really knowing exactly what path to take. I see you guys a little bit very much in your head. Here's the thing of what I'm hearing for you guys. Aries, if you feel like at this point in your life, you have no direction or like you're unsure what it is that you want, try the best you can not to be so hard on yourself. This is a normal process. 95% of the time, at some point in your life, everyone goes through this, where you feel like, you know, work could be going good, uh, finances could be fine, but you just feel like you're so disconnected. You feel like 
you just don't know what it is that you want or what it is that you um what it is that you're working towards you know what i mean it, it, it i see you guys so wrapped up in the everyday routine that you guys kind of stopped living and now you're feeling very disconnected and there's this feeling of a bit of just exhausted because you feel alone or you feel like you don't know what it is that you want. Maybe you feel confused about career paths, confused about relationships. Do I want to get married? Do I want a serious relationship? Do I want to be the single one, always dating multiple people? Like, I feel like you've been going down this path of doing something that is almost like routine-like, um, and it's not fulfilling anymore. It's not fulfilling you. It's not making you feel complete. It's making you, if anything, giving you a lot of anxiety because you feel like you're over that. You want something more, more meaningful, um, but you're just so disconnected. And there's this feeling of like regret or some type of like almost judging yourself. Like, why am I feeling this way? Why do I feel this void? Why do I feel like I'm not, I'm going without a direction or whatever that situation is. Know and understand, Aries, that this is passing. This is something temporary. And like I said, it happens to the best of us. At some point in our lives, we have no idea what the fuck we're doing. And we just kind of got to wing it. You know, <laughs> that's part of life. And I will tell you something, Aries, if you're feeling like this, baby, trust me, I've been there. And the best thing you can possibly do is just acknowledge, you know what, I'm here right now, I'm present, and though I may feel like I have no direction, you know, I will open my eyes, I will open my heart, and I will open my door for my spirit guides to come through and guide me, and guide me to my passions, guide me to what my heart and my soul truly desire. And when you do this, magic happens because a lot of things start to unfold in a very quick way where you feel, like I said, you're walking and you feel like you don't know where you're going, but you're just winging it. You usually end up where you're supposed to or where you're meant to be. Uh, a lot of the unexpected or a lot of the situations where it's unexpected usually are the best circumstances or the best outcomes. I promise you, like I said, I've lived it. Everyone's lived it. At some point, you feel like you just don't know what's going to happen. But listen to what excites you. Listen to your passions. Listen to like connect, reconnect with yourself. Ask yourself, what is it that you're looking for at this point in time? What is it that your soul is craving? What is it that you're desiring? What experiences do you want to have? Do you want to experience what it's like to be extremely excited and thrilled uh, are you looking for peace and, you know, uh, peace and connecting with your spiritual side? Are you looking for innovation? What is it that at this point in time in your life you feel you have an experience and it's something you want to experience? That's where you start and you move forward and you make decisions that are going to get you closer to that, whatever it may be, even if it's as simplistic and as random as getting in your car, putting some gas and saying, you know what, I'm going to go to the next city or, uh, you know, the next few cities and just, you know, get a hotel room and experience that city for that night or for that day or for that week. Um, it's something out of the ordinary, but it definitely is going to shake up that, you know, that energy of being stuck and feeling like you have no direction. Um, We've done it, you know, I've done it multiple times with my sisters. We are just like, at some point, we felt like things were just not going good for us. And we're like, you know what? Let's just get in the fucking car. Let's put some gas and let's just go wherever we feel like going. And we did it. And we ended up in amazing cities where we experienced amazing experiences that perhaps we've never had. We dealt with new people and it, it just brings, it brings a different experience and experiences is what our life is built off of Aries. So my advice to you guys for the remaining of the months is try to be a little bit more spontaneous. Try to ask yourself what it is that you want to experience, not what it is that you want or what it is that you want to attract, but more so what experiences do you want to live 
that you want to feel, that you want to experience, and then make it happen. And as it progresses, you'll start to notice a theme or you'll start to notice what really motivates you and excites you. And that's how you follow your passions, my lovely. All right. I hope that this gives you guys insight. I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. I want to wish all of you guys the very best. Happy Hallow's Eve as always. I love you guys and we'll see each other soon. Till then, bye-bye.